Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Inman. You're now listening to the Word of Deliverance, a fascinating program. And we thank you, Melanie, for being the host of our program. You got some great things. You're getting some letters and had a little lady the other day to write about you and Michelle and Mark. And we got a letter from one of the prisons about you. They really like you. <laughs> and I thank the Lord for that because, you know, they, people are tired of hearing a lot of junk. Yes. You know, about raising money for this and selling this and selling that. But, you know, the Bible is hard to find in great depth. Amen. Understand that you're talking today about a parable in Mark 4, verse 13. Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable, you won't understand any parable. Amen. And he tells you in verse 11 that these mysteries of God mm -hmm. basically can be known. And in this parable holds the key to the mysteries of God. Yes. Isn't that wild? It is. That is really good. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell the people about the key that opens the parables of God. Yes. And the great advantage that we have is once you're born again, you know, God's given us the ability to understand the mysteries. But think about a mystery. You have to search for it, right? It's not just something you just find on the surface is something you got to dig for something you got to search for and it takes work and effort to do it but the great advantage that we have is like you stated in this mark chapter 4 i read it to you unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom but unto them that are without without what without the holy ghost without faith you may say all these things are done in parables and the reason for parables is again for a mystery for god's elect for God's chosen, for this esoteric people that have been called by God to be made known unto them. You know, and as it said in, in this verse 13, you spoke of it. I'll read it again. Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? So by us having this great key and tool of information of understanding these parables, I believe this holds the foundation of us even being able to know all the parables. And I believe this is part of God's gift he's given us that comes through knowledge. It comes through discernment and it comes through searching out and studying. And so with that being stated, we're going to explain some of these parables that Jesus talked about concerning the sower. Well, he certainly tells you in these parables a lot of important information. Tells you that the devil is going to fight you even if you do try to get the word inside you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people today don't understand why Christians are special people. Mm -hmm. The Bible said there's a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And he's telling the disciples, apostles, here in verse 11, he said, look, it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Yes. Tell us, Michelle, what was special about these men and what they were getting ready to do and bringing forth the foundation of the word of God, even in these 12 disciples that was with him. Yes. Well, these 12 disciples, they were actually walking with Jesus and learning from him. And they walked with him while others didn't. And Jesus was discipling them. According to verse 34 of Mark 4, it says, But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. So he was expounding and explaining things and educating them in the scriptures and what they really meant. And he was not talking to them in parables. Well, I think whenever he expounded to them, he wanted them to learn this. It means to educate. If you look up the words using Strong's Bible concordance, you can find this word expounded is very interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's an educational type thing. And I think every Christian that will apply theirself to this they can learn their self how to be a great vessel of God. Now, Amen. I believe if you look at this, I heard these arguments some years ago, and they say, oh, there's never been anybody work miracles like the disciples. And then Vernon McGee and them guys would come along and say, oh, that was for the first hundred years only. Well, they don't have no scripture for that. They're no. a bunch of liars. Mm -hmm. They're deceivers, and they're telling lies out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. And because... You know what? I've seen too many miracles. Michelle, we've seen lots of miracles. Right. The miracle itself tells you that God can come down here and get in a person. You know, this is something. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a miracle? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. How that you can take a drunk, a drug addict, a whoremonger, a lying person, and they can get saved and God could come down and get in them. If God doesn't work miracles 
And the Bible said Hebrews 13 and 8, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. If he don't miracles, if he don't work miracles, how does he get inside of you and change you? Right. right. I mean, this is something. But anyway, mm -hmm. let's look at this, uh, uh, Michelle. Tell us some of the things that people are to know that I believe was getting inside of the disciples at this time. So mm -hmm. they were really able to stand the work of the Holy Spirit in the kingdom of God. Because that's what this parable is is all about if you look at this parable of the sower mm -hmm. it tells you why some believe why some don't believe right well we know that the seed is the word of god and the ground is our are, are the hearts of men and it says in verse 15 and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown and when they have heard satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts and it says, and these are like they likewise, which are sown on stony ground. And the stony ground are for those have, who have hardened their hearts, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. And so endure for but a time. But afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, the words uh, sake for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Well, I think people has to really uh, look at the totality of that scripture. What did this mean, Melody, when it says for the word of God's sake, they were offended? I mean, they had the word in them mm -hmm. because uh, let's let you explain it. Well, for the word of God's sake, they was offended at the word of God. Maybe the word of God was preached unto them. Maybe they had pride. Maybe they were not humble. Maybe they were told about sin. Maybe they were told about fornication. And in return, maybe they were offended at the word and they turned away. Maybe um, it could be a numerous of reasons. Um, you know, you talk about somebody in lust or anything like that. Sometimes people get offended. Or maybe when hard times arise, they start questioning, where is God? Why do you allow this to happen to me? But instead of trusting in the Lord, they get offended. And then they allow these, these types of things to come in and separate them from God. And one thing, if you want to touch more on that, Pastor, you can. Maybe you have a better input also. Well, I was just going to say it can go a lot of different ways, Melanie. What about whenever Jesus, the disciples from John the Baptist, come to him and they says, how is it that, uh, you know, are, are you he that was to come or is, mm -hmm. should we look for another? And he says, you go back and, uh, you know, after he worked miracles before them, he tells them, you go back and tell John what you see. The blind receive their sight and the deaf their hearing and mm -hmm. so forth. And when they started to leave, he said, also, you know, tell him that blessed is he who is not offended in me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, when things don't go your way, Melanie, uh, you ever blame God? I had a woman one time that blamed God because her husband died leaving her in debt. Mm -hmm. And then she got mad at her husband because he left her money uh, for like two cents mm -hmm. <laughs> or a nickel. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she didn't have any money. So she was mad at God because he let it happen. And she was mad at that. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just crazy. But people do get like that. Yes, they do. And John the Baptist was in prison at yes, that time. Yes, he was. Things was not going well for him. Mm -hmm. He was locked up. And Jesus, while he's telling them this, he said, greater is no man that's born by woman than John the Baptist. Amen. Right. But he also was warning them, don't be offended because God was not going to get him out of jail. That's right. He had to be beheaded. Right. Yes. So some things don't go our way. People get upset with God. Mm -hmm. Could that be what they're talking about here? I believe here? so too. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Cause them to trip. And that word offended also is to trip up, to cause the sin, to get some bitterness inside of you. So there's a lot of reasons why some people do not stay <clears throat> in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Now, the devil comes to catch away that which was sown in your heart if you know you just received the seed by the wayside mm -hmm. now this has to I, this wayside or that's not his disciples mm -hmm. these were people that was with him okay and your strong bible concordance this can easily point to uh, a natural person okay. uh, a person that was not like keeping the laws like you know could Matthew, have been anybody i think matthew 13 19 kind of explains this one a little better because he says and when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that was sown in his heart 
This is he that received seed by the wayside. So they hear the word, but they're not understanding it. That's why you hear have a lot of people come in church that hear the word of God. They hear the message, but they're not really understanding it. And when they go out, it's like they never came into church. Okay, what about these people receive it immediately? And they mm -hmm. use their word A-N-O-N -N, with joy. Mm -hmm. But when tribulation arises, is what you mentioned a while ago, Melanie? Yes, sir. Yes. So these people have joy, and they look the part, but they don't really hold it either. Mm -hmm. So uh, give us a little more feedback yes. on this, because some people just are not really with it. Well, like we stated, when this, this is the one with the stony ground, when afflictions and a persecution arises. And this is where we as born-again believers have to understand that Romans 8, 28 if we're in the will of God, if we're in the grace of God, and we have his word circling around our hearts and our minds, then everything is going to work out for our good. But again, it's contingent upon if we're trusting in God, what we're thinking upon, what we're meditating upon, and who our faith is in. And this shows us, again, a great um, depth of information on keys for us Christians to how, to how to keep the root of God in us, if that makes sense, that grow in the word and, and have his word of God be, be furnished in us, you know, and when things do arise and will arise, we're rooted and grounded. Now we could talk about verse 18, you know, these are they which are sown among thorns that hear the word and the care. I think this is a major one also. And the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, they choke the word of God and it becometh unfruitful. I like this because if you look at the cares of the world in this Mark chapter 4, verse 19, it talks about distractions. People are so distracted. You're so busy with work, jobs, um, cars, bills, and everything to the point where people don't have time to go to church anymore. You know, and I think this is a major thing that hinders people in their walk with God. And also deceitfulness of riches. We're taught that, oh, great gain is godliness. This is what we're taught. But if you read the scriptures, if we hear that type of preaching, it says we're supposed to turn away from them. But a lot of people, they go after money and riches and wealth and materialistics, and we find out that this causes people to become unfruitful and actually chokes the word of God out of them. Well, that's kind of what Creflo Dollar's complete church is built on, you know, about people getting rich and people getting get big money and him changing his name from Smith to Dollar. We know that's something. I mean, how he changed his name in the court of law right. to Creflo Dollar, not even his real name. He wants people to believe that, you know, he's got the idea of how you can get money. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the whole idea is here, Melanie, if you learn about people that are not born again and people that put no effort into what they do, before the devil can catch away that which is sown in the heart, mm -hmm. people have to learn the idea of meditating, they have to learn the idea of protecting their mind. Yes. And they have to learn the idea of scriptures like, what is it, Hebrews 5.14? Mm -hmm. And I think you should tell them about that. Yes, that talks about the strong meat that belongs to them that are of a full age. In other words, those that are mature Christians, you know, by reason of use that have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And this shows us the need of getting in the word of God studying the word of God and it says exercise and that exercise means a fitness so think about when people go to the gym man they got to work hard and it's not easy just for example being a runner me personally I don't like running and it's tough but this is how we exercise ourselves and the more you do it the more it's like you build your endurance and and the more productive and the stronger you get and this shows us the effort that has to be put forth even into our studying it's fitness. It's training. And, and it takes the effort to do this. It's not easy. Okay, Michelle. They have a word over in Hebrews chapter 4. Jesus is our rest. Now, those seventh-day people don't want you to know this. It says right there in verse 3, We do have a rest that remaineth. And that we that enter in, he says, labor to enter in. So you find that sophistry is entered in. That's Jewish, which, well, I don't want to call it Jewish witchcraft. It's Jewish uh, people according to the scriptures. If you look at the philosophers, that's who they are. Jewish, specifically Jewish sophistry. That's what they did in the days of Paul. And that's what it's all about. And the Bible said they've never repented. They've never changed. Okay, if we look at this real carefully, tell us what it means. It says we're supposed to labor 
to enter in. Yes, this labor is 4704 in your Greek Strong's Concordance. And it says to use speed. That is, make effort and be prompt or earnest. And if you look at the bottom of that, it says to study diligently, diligence. So he's talking about uh, using use as speed like right away, like today, not waiting to put off tomorrow. You, and then it goes to, to be earnest, to be diligent, to be study the scriptures, to know them. This is how you're renewed in your mind, according to Romans 12, 2, is by the scriptures. Okay, in John 15, 3, he said, you are cleansed through the word I've spoken unto you. Amen. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. And if you look over in Ephesians chapter 5, it said we're washed by the water of the word. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you go to the Old Testament, look up the word, the labor, brazen labor, and it says, when you look it up in the Hebrew word, it said a pulpit where you preach from. Mm -hmm. You know, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how can they hear without a preacher? Right. And this is so, why he tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 14. He says in verse 14 and 15, neglect, neglect not the gift that is given thee, which by the prophecy and laying on of hands of, of the presbytery. He says, but meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. So if you find someone that does this, Melanie, mm -hmm. can the devil come away and steal that which is in their heart? Because according to the scriptures, we're supposed to put on the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, I think there's two things that people can learn in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We've preached it many times. Mm -hmm. One of them is in verse 6, it talks about the word perfect, which means mentally and morally grown up. Yes. And Christians can be mentally and morally grown up. Amen. It just takes some work. Amen. And then he concludes this with verse 16. Tell them what Amen. that says. Well, that's the one that talks about having the mind of Christ. So it shows us in verse 6, in order to be a perfect person and to continue to mature as a, a full age or a mature man, is one who has the mind of Christ. And this is going along with Ephesians six seventeen about taking the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and also the helmet of salvation. You know, this is how we protect our mind. This is how we guard our mind, not only for offense, but for defense too, you know, to fight against the enemy. But part of that helmet is a complete circle, allowing no doors open, and one thing real quick, I had mentioned that Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. I want to clear something up. I used that exercise, and I said it was fitness. But this specific verse is talking about to practice naked in the games. And you may feel like I went over your head with that statement. But I feel like our word of God is enough. We don't need other books. We don't need other types of so-called commentaries of different people because nine times out of ten, they can lead us astray. So I feel like our Bible is enough. We don't need other things to add to it. The word of God itself, again, is good enough. Well, they got guys that preach. I'm glad you said that, Melanie, because they got guys that preach yesterday on the radio. And this probably be, I don't know, five weeks till they get this, till they hear this. But he was preaching. We don't really need to look for the Antichrist. We don't really need to know and worry about him coming. Mm -hmm. And we're to just believe everybody and we're just to be happy and don't judge. Just look for Jesus. Just, yeah, look, just look for that, Jesus. Remember that Hebrews 5.14 we just read? This is what gives us the ability to discern. By getting in the word of God, studying the word of God, exercising ourselves in the word of God, this is where you find the word discern both good and evil and having knowledge of goodness of God, but also knowing what evil is out there, knowing your opponent. Well, that's why they got these people that actually preach in reverse talking uh, against living for God and the scriptures. These guys do this for a living. Yes. And some of them are paid well to do it. Yes. yes. And if you have the mind of Christ, like when they came against Jesus in Luke twenty twenty three, when they try to say, oh, well, uh, should we pay tribute to Caesar? But Jesus knew their craftiness and perceived their craftiness. And so if we had the mind of Christ, then we can perceive the craftiness of those that are trying to use their um, cunning craftiness against the church. Well, they wanted to trip him up, but he was too smart for that. But Paul was all into it, too. Paul knew about him. I mean, Ben from the tribe of Benjamin, you know, and all of this, I'm sure he knew some stuff. Right. You know, because he didn't, um, you know, he wasn't raised 
serving Jesus. Right. He was raised by the Jews. He knew what they were doing. And sophistry and these kind of things with interest on money. I mean, they like interest on money, don't they? Yes, they do. I mean, they like that interest. And that's another way that they get a lot of money out of people. But, you know, we look today at the things that people are able to do. And one of the things I think a born-again believer must do, he must learn to keep himself in the scriptures and learn about the parable of the sower. Mm -hmm. Now, there are certain, certain things, Melanie, that you learn in Matthew 13, and here it is in Mark chapter 4. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the, the fowls that lodge in the mustard seed, which was an herb, Yes. but it grew to such a degree that it became a tree, mm -hmm. and the fowls lodged in the branches thereof. Amen. Okay, we got a lot of people in Christianity today that fit this, if you understand what this symbolizes, mm -hmm. and they are what we call, uh, Michelle called them while ago, they're dirty birds. <laughs> 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 and they really are dirty <laughs> birds, but this goes a little deeper than that. These are the, the people that are the birds here that are lodging in the fowls, uh, mm -hmm. they're lodging in the branches, they are the ones that don't have any wings. They're these kind of fowls. Okay. But the wings over in Revelations 19, mm -hmm. I think it is verse 17, 18, something like that. It says that they are going to eat the flesh of great men and captains. Mm -hmm. But what do these flesh, why, why, what do these fowls do here that is, you know, lodging in the branches of the, you know, tree that has uh -huh. been... One time it was an herb only, H-E-R-B, uh -huh. -E which is small. Yes. But now it's grown. That's like Christianity has grown yes. up so much. It's hard for the new people, young people, to even know what is right and wrong. That's right. And that shows you how these fowls represent something evil. You can call it doctrines of devils. You can call it ministers from Satan himself, false prophets, false apostles. And they're lodged in the church, you, you can call it. You can lodge it. They're lodged in. I'm telling you guys, they made it to where you can't even hardly purchase a good Bible today. We was even trying to find some good King James Bibles that give you all the other options a lot cheaper. And then at the very end, they'll probably give you King James, which you probably got to pay 50% more just to get that. So Unless just, you got to search for it. Yes, just showing the listeners how, how they've corrupted so much of the church today it's not even funny you don't even know today who's of god and who's not if you don't study and you don't have the holy spirit working in you the only way you can know is to stay in the bible yes if you try to go what you feel that's right I had a lady tell me the other day well all i know is that i pray when i pray i feel better well i'm sorry but the devil deals with flesh too mm -hmm. yes Tell them, Michelle, does the devil deal with flesh? Yes, he does. Definitely. De the people can shake their bodies real good. Kundalini. Kundalini. That's one of the spirits they brought out of India. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can shake you real well. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing about it is some people feel it on their flesh. And, mm -hmm. oh, I just felt comfortable when I left. We don't do that. We stay by the word of God. Amen. By the fruits, you know them. And Jesus said, if you continue in my word, so shall you be my disciples. Mm -hmm. If it don't match up with the word of God, mm -hmm. let me tell you something. It ain't in the Bibles. Melody, tell Amen. the people now, is there any word in the New Testament or in the Old Testament that we're to go by feelings? No, we're supposed to go by truth. And this is what I believe. It says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And this is where people don't have any truth today. They go off of feelings. What, and John I, 17, 17. Yes. The word is truth. Yes. So and, you stay in the word. Yes. And this is what we live by. And this is what we call knowledge. And this type of knowledge is what keeps us. This knowledge is what gives us wisdom. This knowledge is what leads us and guides us in everyday life and what keeps us in the grace of God. We've seen a man, Todd Bentley, Michelle, he was telling people how that the power of God comes on him and runs down through his shoulders and down through his arms and then it gets into his hands and Oh, he just was really going into this. Does there any place in the scriptures that that actually is confirmed by? No, not one. Not one. Not but one. yet that man had the biggest revival that's ever been in the United States down mm -hmm. in Florida. Yes. And another go scripture that goes along with this, these people that are lodging in the bird or birds that are lodging in this tree is second Peter two, one and two. It talks about how there are were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, 
even denying the Lord that brought, bought them and bring upon themselves swift destructions. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Well, you know those scriptures that Miles Monroe preached all them years on TBN, that you're God and you should be able to create, and create stuff yourself, that you're the little G God. Mm -mm. And then Joyce Myers preaches them all the time also. Mm -hmm. But then if you look in the New Testament, when it says you're God's, it wasn't talking about that being a God. It right. talked about that you're God's possession. Yes, yes, sir. I mean, this is what it is. You're God's. G, you belong to God. Right. Yes. But they take this and turn it around. Is that sophistry, Melody? That is sophistry. That's mm -hmm. tricking people out of their soul and blaspheming God. Amen. And at the end of the day, they didn't hear anything that, that really did anything but corrupt what they hear. Not only is these people, they're still preaching it. Creflo Dollar preaches it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're looking at Duplantis. He preaches it. Yep. These guys, Copeland, they preaches it. I mean, Kenneth Copeland said that God told him he could save people. Lord have he mercy. said Jesus didn't save nobody until he got saved. Mm -hmm. You know, these are corrupted lies, and they're twisting up scriptures. Right. And I think there's a lot of people have got caught up into the occult. They've got caught up into witchcraft, and they wind up believing another Jesus that's not in our Bible. Mm -hmm. And also, talk, the Bible talks about that people are, that are not really educated in the scriptures, then guess what? Ephesians 4, 14 talks about how they're going to be carried and tossed to with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, by cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But if you are grown up in the scriptures and you have knowledge of the scriptures, then guess what? They won't be able to deceive you because this cunning craftiness is talking about adroitness. They're very skillful. They sound very good. And they sound like, I mean, if you didn't know the scriptures, they could really convince someone. So these people are very skillful in deceiving people. Mm -hmm. And then it talks about sophistry is, is like a, a, an argument that is invalid. But it sounds reasonable on the surface. Well, it takes time. What that tells you is it takes time to sort it out. Mm -hmm. And Christians, most of them, if they got a strong Bible concordance, I've been doing this for a lot of years. I have only seen a couple of people that had a Strong's that really know how to use it. Because what? Their church didn't use it. Mm -hmm. The pastors didn't use it. If the pastor had one, he's just like them. He didn't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. And they sold it to him to make money off of it. Wasn't show, nobody showed him how to use it. Mm -hmm. And I think people are perishing and destroyed from the lack of knowledge. Yes. Amen. So if you get a good Strong's Bible concordance, if you all will get a pencil now, I'll give you a good number for Strong's Bible concordance. It also has uh, a good bunch of uh, added things to it. And I think you will like this. It's got Vines Dictionary in it. Expanded with best of Vines Dictionary. The ISBN number in this strong, you can get one that's slightly damaged you for about $20 delivered to you. And it's slightly damaged, but you can't even see where it's damaged. It's ISBN dash 13 colon 978-1-4185. Dash four two three seven dash five. If you get a Strong's Bible Concordance at ChristianBooks.com, this is uh, made by uh, Thomas Nelson's publishing company, and I think you'll be extremely pleased with this. Why don't you write to us? My name is Pastor Inman. You spell that my name I N M A N. Just write Pastor Inman. Our address is five eighteen Pleasant Valley Avenue, Dayton, Ohio. Four five four zero four, and if you want to email us, my email address is Pastor Inman. One word, Pastor Inman, I N M A N, at att dot net. You can even call us at nine three seven two three five zero two four six. I want to thank you for listening to our program. These girls put a lot of work into what they've got, Brother Mark, Melanie, and Michelle. They've got some really great things. And um, I want you to keep us in your prayers. I believe God's got something for them people today that will separate themselves and set themselves aside to do the work of the Lord. I'm Pastor Inman. You've been listening to the Word of Deliverance. Have a great day. <laughs>